Hi, welcome back. You are tuned into Closing Bell on CNBC TV 18. Well, let's move on to the top story, Yota Infra. A 100% owned subsidiary of Hira Nandani Group today launched the Yota NM1, India's largest data center in Panvel. Let's cut across to my colleague Kritika Saxena, who is standing by with Niranjan Hira Nandani, chairman of the Hira Nandani Group. Kritika, take it away. Thanks very much for that, Sodal. Uh, Mr. Hiranandani, thank you very much for joining in with uh, this very important uh, move uh, for the group. Uh, to begin with, what is the kind of investment that you are putting in, sir? The expectation about a year ago when this data center was announced was anywhere between 14,000 to 15,000 crore rupees. Uh, is that the uh, uh, approximate amount that you have put into the data center launch? Mr. Hiranandani, I think uh, your audio is on mute, sir. These are, of course, the issues with work from home. So, if I could just ask you to unmute your audio, sir. I'm going to ask you the question again. Uh, we understand that about 14,000 to 15,000 crore rupees roughly is the amount that is going to be going in. Can you help us understand the investment or the capex that be, is being put into the data center launch? At the launch phase, it is around 1400 crores, and we expect to invest around 3500 crores in the next uh, 24 months. That's the amount of this thing, not 14,000 crores. Uh, but yes, the, the, the kind of business operations which are there in India in this sector is certainly large. Uh, total investment in this sector, according to the announcement made by uh, the IT minister uh, is has been about a year ago said 8,000 crores in the next three years would go into data centers. So we would take a substantial portion of the additional data center operations that would take place. So we are quite uh, into it and uh, we went on very aggressively into setting up the first center in the Navi Mumbai area, Pan Panvel area of Navi Mumbai. Okay, so you know this is uh, the uh, first uh, announcement with respect to this data center. What is the plan going forward? Can you take us to the phase-wise rollout that you are going to look at? I believe it is the entire data center park is going to house multiple data center within it. Uh, what is the plan there, sir? So basically what we are looking for is to see multiple operators to come into the position in, within the data center as happens in most of the cases. And we also expect that the larger providers who want to deal with the data centers will take a lot of space from us. So we have given this offer to multiple players into the market to join us and participate in the, doing these things. Uh, the operations have just started today. So obviously the coming into the space will be there in the next 60, uh, 90, 120 days is what we are expecting it to be done. And uh, we expect a large amount of people to take the space. We are in negotiation and talks with uh, almost two dozen people over there, large and small, both in terms of operations and uh, very extremely bullish into the field of uh, the data centers as we see it. So, but you know, in terms of revenue, what is the kind of growth that you are expecting? Because, you know, the data center business in India is expected to almost double in five years' time. So, can you help us understand what is the kind of CAGR growth that you would look at, for instance, and say by 2022, any figures that you can give us as to the kind of revenue potential the business will have? So, we think that the data center business should grow at least uh, 25 to 30 percent in this current year. And uh, there should be an annual increment of about 30% per year for the next three years, uh, at least. Uh, but in this COVID year, we do see a more rapid expansion to have taken place. And we think that in this year, there could be as much as 50 to 60% growth in terms of the data center business that we see. For example, uh, the amount of data utilized by people today has grown almost 70% on the uh, the residential and other side and the other businesses will only grow exponential as we see it so every time you do a kick in terms of buying something on e-commerce or we are now discussing it uh, over the skype or any other media that we utilize a data center operation is actually happening at this present time uh, through which we are able to do what we are doing just now 
So we do see this opportunity as the thing. As somebody just mentioned uh, a little while ago, that data is the new oil. And uh, in fact, uh, with oil and power being substituted by green power over a period of years, I think the requirement of oil will definitely come down. Gas is likely to go up more. But uh, data, is, uh, in fact, should grow exponentially. This is our expectations, and uh, that is how we have actually gone into and committed into this arena. What do you make of the government's data uh, data localization drive, sir? You know, from when you announced the data center launch uh, uh, till the day, uh, till today that the launch has actually happened, there's been a lot of clarity that has come in, yes, but there's still a lot of concern that global players have been raising. Uh, what is your sense with respect to how this will evolve going forward? I think the reverse is true. I think the Prime Minister is pretty clear of Atma Nirbhar Bharat. He's very clear in terms of data privacy. He's uh, brought in a bill which I believe is likely to be passed in terms of data privacy and uh, data protection. And of course, data should be localized in India. Why should Indian data be located overseas? Why cannot India be a global player in terms of data centers? Why should we not be as efficient in case of data centers as we are in the case of IT? So, would you not be the data center location of the world? Could you not do the data center protest, uh, processing in this country? What about artificial intelligence? What about uh, so many of the new items which are going to take place, uh, which were never there before? Look at education which is taking place. Look at the kind of thing that you will be able to now reach. All these years we talked about how to reach education to the poorest of the poor how to reach education to the uh, to the villages of India, how to reach the girl child, child in, uh, in the home, how to do all these things. Now, uh, the post-COVID situation easily shows us. For example, I'm uh, looking after 14 colleges in Bombay. We have 45,000 students. As of today, 20,000 plus are already online. And when the colleges reopen by the mid of July, 45,000 students will be completely online in education. Could we have even dreamt about this a, little, a couple of years ago? Would you have not thought that education would suffer completely? In fact, it's becoming better. Because those who could not get good education, those who could not uh, have the reach, with the new uh, digital system, with the availability of uh, uh, internet, and connectivity which is now expanding, the 5G connectivity too, I think what is really going to happen is that the digital India is going to take care of the poor. And this is the most important part of it all. I think we'll be able to give the benefits of the poor. The Prime Minister, of course, has different ideas in terms of doing it. So whether it is the uh, card that we have to do or it is uh, the system by which you will uh, do a direct money transfer to the poorest of all. Right. All this done digitally. So I okay. think the opportunities in respect of the digital growth is going to be exponential. All right, sir. Thank you so much for joining in and giving us a quick take on what lies ahead with respect to the potential of data center growth. You know, Sonal, uh, just about uh, a week ago, we saw Carlyle investing into Airtel's data center business. We've seen Oracle launching their second data center business, and now India's largest data center has been launched by the Hiranandani Group. But lots of potential, as you pointed out, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic uh, world, and hopefully after that. Oh, absolutely, Krutika. As they say, data is the new oil and it could, it's good to see new investments coming in, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic times. But with that, let's move on.